How's it going, folks? How's it going? I'm Brother Matthew, and this is Christian Coffee Time. So, um, I just wanted to come on here and do a little bit of a talk about something um, I have personal experience in, and something that other people may, be, ha may have had interest in before or do have interest in. And I want to talk a bit about ghost hunting. So, I know it's kind of a random topic. The kind of something inter interesting that a lot of people don't think about, but ghost hunting. Now, this is something a lot of people have taken part in, do take part in, and uh, have a lot of interest in. Um, okay, let's talk about ghost hunting for a moment. Is it something that Christians should do? Is it dangerous? Now, many of you know my personal testimony that uh, I have given on many occasions. I have background in... Uh, the occult and witchcraft. I spent 16 years practicing occultism, practicing witchcraft. Um, I used to be an avid ghost hunter. A lot of people kind of laugh and scoff at this. Okay, well, ghosts are demons. Ghosts are demons. That's what they are. Um, there's no middle ground gray area where disembodied spirits of dead people walk around and do whatever. That That's not a thing. That doesn't happen. The, the Word of God very clearly teaches absent from the body is present with the Lord, that, um, that the body without the spirit is dead, and uh, it's appointed to men once to die, and after this, the judgment, you either go to heaven or hell, depending on whether or not you believe in the Lord or not, according to the word of God. All right, so, if ghosts aren't people, then what are they? They're devils. All right, let's talk about that for a moment. So, ghost hunting basically is then demon hunting. You are looking for demons. You're looking for the activity of demons. You're, you're trying to find the manifestation of demons. Okay, think about this. Ghost hunting is then demon hunting. You're looking for demons. But I, but I saw the spirit of my dead uncle, and he spoke just like him, and he knew things about me. Okay, let's look at that one. Okay, from personal experience because i used to do this i used to live in that world for 16 years i was an avid practitioner of witchcraft and occultism i was a conjurer i was a spirit conjurer i was a teacher of the occult i was the headmaster in a school of occultism and witchcraft as a, i taught uh, conjuring spirit conjuring divination and enchantment real world stuff not stupid hollywood harry potter garbage i'm talking about real world stuff uh, uh, where we actually practice real world witchcraft. Um, and so, okay, what are ghosts? Uh, they manifest, but they look like my dead uncle or whatever. Okay, you see, spirit beings, spirits are persons without bodies. And they've been around since the very beginning of time. God created them at the beginning. He all the, everything was good, and then we see the rebellion of Lucifer, and he deceived a third of the angels, and they fell with him. Uh, so they've been around since the beginning. They don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't die, they don't rest. They've been around uh, since the beginning. They've seen everything that's gone on. They've seen all the kingdoms and empires and the civilizations and people groups since the beginning. They know how to walk like you, talk like you, masquerade like you. They know your strengths. They know your weaknesses by observation. By just watching you 24-7, 365 without blinking, they, they see and know everything that you're doing. When you think you're in secret, they're right there watching. So they, they, they know your strengths, they know your weaknesses, they know what you struggle with, they know your temptations, they know how to walk like you, talk like you, and look like you. They know how to masquerade like you. So when you die, and then someone comes into your room or your home, whatever, and there's the ghost you walking around, what do you think that is? That's the that's a devil that is that knows how to masquerade as you. That's all it is. Here's the other thing. Let's just hypothetically, just for fun, hypothetically, let's just say uh, that it is your spirit. Let's say it is you. Then how come whenever the mention of the of the blood of Jesus Christ is the mention of the blood of Jesus Christ, they vanish? How come? Every time. Every time a ghost manifests or whatever, you come across a ghost or whatever, you mention Jesus Christ, you mention the blood of Christ, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ, and it's gone. 
you not think if it was your spear, if it was you or whatever, that you, you would react to that in a positive way instead? Well, why, why every time they manifest, they run when, when Jesus Christ is presented to them? It's because it's a devil. That's all it is. Okay, let's take a look at ghost games. You know, like Bloody Mary. Uh, what is that game, Bloody Mary? You know, the whole thing, you stand with candles in front of a mirror in a dark room, uh, room's all blacked out, you got candles, and you stare in the mirror, and you repeat Bloody Mary, or whatever. Oh, what, what's that all about? Well, that's actually a modernization of an ancient, ancient witchcraft technique of spirit conjuring called scrying. S-C-R-Y-I-N-G. Scrying. Now, this is something I used to be a master of. One of the forms I used to use uh, for conjuring spirits. Scrying, you can use mirrors. You could use um, any glossy surface. You could use a bowl of water that has a reflective surface. You can use all kinds of things for scrying. You can scry pretty much anything. But mirror scrying is highly effective. Um, and what, you, what you're doing is you're kind of just glazing over your eyes and, you, and you're just repeating what it is you want and something manifests. Yes, it's real. Something actually does manifest. It is a demon. You are conjuring demons by doing that. It's a demon conjuring technique. Now, what about Ouija boards? Oh, it's just a game made up by Mattel. No, it's not. No, it's not. Mattel came across an ancient uh, uh, form of mediumship, of conjuring, of communicating with the dead, communicating with spirits, and they marketed it as a game, as a family game. It is based on an old witch's medium technique of, of uh, having the spirits move stuff on the table. They could use straws, sticks, spoons, planchettes, whatever. And you would put markings on a table, markings on a surface, any kind of markings, and you would ask the spirits to move the thing to speak to you. It's a way of communicating with the demons. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12 talks about communicating with familiar spirits as abomination to God. And let alone, even the Ouija board thing is so dangerous that even Aleister Crowley, the most satanic man, the most wicked man, even, even himself said that it's so dangerous, don't touch it. He was Alistair Crowley was afraid of the Ouija board. <laughs> Think about that one. Because it's very dangerous because it's what's called an open door technique. Where you don't set up any shields or wards or whatever. You are literally inviting anything that happens to be in the area to come to you. That's why some people using a Ouija board, nothing happens. Other people, some activity and other people, it's a straight on poltergeist nightmare. Because you have no idea what happens to be in the area of, of, of listening uh, to be able to come and visit you. So yeah, stay away from that stuff. And uh, the, with uh, ghost hunting, you have the different types of tools and techniques. I mean, you know, they have the EMF readers and all that kind of stuff. It's all stupid. Okay, but what is with that? All right. In the ancient world, they used to use cauldrons smoke, incense, crystals, rocks, bones, stones to try to contact spirits. Nowadays, with the highly advanced technological thing, they use technology. Can technology detect spirits? No. No, they can't. No, they do not. But but how come? But they go in there with all this stuff and they happen to find them. Like I said earlier, they're watching. They're listening. They're observing. They are watching you wander around like an idiot with a magnetic electric, electric sensor device thing. And like, where's the demons? Where's the demons? And suddenly the lights like, there's a demon. That's it's a, what they're doing is they're watching you. So the thing is, they know what you're doing. You're trying to contact them with the intention of trying to contact demons, that wicked intention of trying to contact demons attracts the demons. Demons aren't stuck in abandoned ruins. That's dumb. Where, uh, well, this place is haunted and they're, they're trapped here. They're trapped in this. No, they're not. Spirits aren't trapped to one location. You can't 
bind them to be trapped, stuck in, stuck in one location. That's not a thing. When people die, their spirits don't get trapped in one area. That's dumb. The Bible says you go to heaven or hell, that's it. And there's no middle ground gray area we want around haunting people or whatever. You don't, that's not a thing. It's demons. And what you're doing is you're attracting them. That when you start engaging in Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12, um, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. It's human sacrifice and or abortion. You're deliberately murdering children for selfish reasons. Um, or that useth divination or an observer of times fortune teller or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are abomination unto the Lord. Okay, or a consulter with familiar spirits. What's that? Seeking for, conjuring, contacting spirits to converse with them, to have fellowship with them. So when you are deliberately going to an area specifically looking for ghost spirits, or, which are demons. You're looking for them to contact them, to talk to them, to be aware of them, to communicate with them. That's consulting familiar spirits. That's a form of witchcraft. That is evil. That is wicked. That's an abomination unto the Lord. So ghost hunting actually falls under also the umbrella of necromancy. Necromancy. Because... You are contacting the spirits of the dead, which the demons masquerade as. And you are deliberately trying to contact these. So that is technically consulting with familiar spirits and necromancy. There you go. So next time you're ever tempted to try to contact them, speak to them, have fellowship with them or whatever else, or go to these places and try to trying to find them, keep that in mind. That's what that is. That's what these people are doing. They, uh, there's people that go and they do this and they research it and they study it and they record it. That's what they're doing. They are actually taking part and participating in consulting with familiar spirits and necromancy. They are demon hunting to play with demons, to get their little spooks by demons, to get a little thrill by demons doing stuff to them. That's, that's what that is. It's straight up wickedness. It's straight up evil. It's straight up bad. It's bad news and it's dangerous. So I just want to bring that up. Just mention that. It's just something that most people wouldn't think of. And again, I'm coming from a background of personal experience. I know what this is all about. I know what they're doing. I know what these things are. So be aware. And anyone who is, who is an ex-occultist, an ex-witch or ex-Satanist, who now a born-again Christian, anyone who's dabbled in the world of the occult and witchcraft will tell you everything that I'm saying is 100% truth. Because there are so many people out there, so many other Christians who will say that I'm, I'm nuts, I'm off my rocker, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm exaggerating. Those people have no experience with this world. That's like someone who doesn't know anything about being an auto mechanic who knows nothing about how to build an engine, build cars, you know, and is not a licensed auto mechanic. They just know how to change the tires. They know how to change the oil. They take their car into the garage to get some repairs and they start telling the mechanic how to do his job because they don't believe that the mechanic really knows what the, what's, uh, that, what the mechanic says the problem is. They think the mechanic is just exaggerating. No, I don't No, You're wrong. You're exaggerating. That's not what the problem is, but the mechanic knows exactly what he's talking about. They're, you're either an expert or an enthusiast. There's only two classes of people. There's experts and enthusiasts. The expert lives it, eats, breathes, lives, studies. Their whole life is this thing. The enthusiast is just a dabbler. There's every once in a while they dip their toe in and they just kind of look it up and they just have a little bit of knowledge of it. So when someone is an expert on something and they tell you, look, this is what it is, you might want to listen. When it comes to the world of the occult, when it comes to the world of witchcraft, I know what I'm talking about because I was an expert. 
I lived it day and night, 24-7, 365. Uh, I, I would be practicing it, thinking of it. I'd be training in it. I would get up all hours of the night to do the rituals. I was the headmaster of a witchcraft and occult uh, training uh, training area, uh, uh, facility, school. This is what we did. I was a master of this stuff. I lived it for 16 years. Go listen to my testimony. I'll tell you all, uh, tell you all about it. And so I know what I'm talking about. I made blood packs with my own blood, blood packs with the demons. They would come and speak to me and teach me and fellowship with me. This is, this was my past life for 16 years. So I know what I'm talking about and I'm talking about this kind of stuff. So I'm not an enthusiast. I'm an expert. And I can even put you in contact with other people who are now born again Christians who used to be in that world as well. And they'll tell you everything that I'm saying is 100% true. So when, when an ex-witch is telling you that something is witchcraft and abomination, maybe they know what they're talking about. All right. So there you go. But now I'm a born again Christian bought by the blood of my Lord God, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Sa saves me by grace through faith, by belief alone. And I'm sealed, born again, saved. My name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. My sins are washed away. Uh, my, my, my iniquity is purged by the Spirit of God, by the blood of Christ, by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, my Lord God, Jesus Christ. So now that I'm born again, saved. I'm a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a Bible teacher of his holy word. I now use my old knowledge to warn Christians. I, I now expose occult. I expose witchcraft. I expose this stuff. And, I, and I'm a missionary to the world of the occult. Where I now go back to that old dark world. And I try to lead those people to the, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. I try to help them to see the power of Jesus Christ. That they could be born again and saved. And I expose the darkness that they're in. So that they could see the truth of Christ. So now I'm a missionary to the world of the occult. So this is uh, so. This is what I do is I, I try to reach them and I try to expose this stuff. I try to edify the saints and draw the lost to Christ. So please give this some thought. Uh, be aware of this stuff. Rewatch this video. Share it around. And with that, God bless you folks. God bless all those who love our Lord God Jesus Christ. God bless all those who love the Holy Word of God. Hope to see you again. And as always, if I don't see you again, I'll see you in the sky. God bless.